Hey guys, I have COVID and I feel like I'm like 50 IQ points dumber than normal and there's usually not a lot to work with there anyway, so just bear with me here. I'm gonna try to talk about electrical stuff. So here we are under the hood. We've got our starter battery and this battery is already grounded to the frame, so I didn't have to do anything there. But here, uh, this is our four gauge wire that's running to our battery isolator. So I attached it to the positive side of the starter battery around here. Got some protectant stuff on here. And I did have to pay somebody to wire this through the firewall because this vehicle in particular has a very difficult firewall to access. And I spent two hours struggling and crying trying to like fit my hand in there and find a way through and I couldn't so I just paid someone to do it. Sometimes it's worth it. It comes in through the firewall um, into here under these panels. I wired it under these panels just by popping them off real quick. It's not hard to do. Come around and show you. So it comes in through there. Four gauge wire all the way to the battery isolator. So uh, behind here, it's attached with terminal lugs to the battery isolator and then comes out of the battery isolator and connects to the house battery. And from there, I've got eight gauge wire going to the fuse panel. And I've got 20 amp uh, fuse blocks in here, but I'm gonna change some of them to 10 and five because the LED, the dimmer switch needs a, a maximum 10 amp fuse or else it won't work. Now the house battery is grounded to the van frame. I just sanded off the paint so that it was metal on metal and then I used a bolt to ground the ring terminal to the body of the van. And I used four gauge wire to ground it as well. However, the grounding unit can be two units higher than, or less powerful, than the uh, positive wire. So I could have used uh, eight gauge wire to ground the battery. So from the fuse panel, I have the max air fan coming out here with 14 gauge wire. And this is the puck lights. Uh, it's not attached yet because I need to replace the fuse with a 10 amp or less powerful. And this is the wire to the diesel heater, also 14 gauge. Now everything needs to be grounded, so I've grounded some of my appliances and electronics to the star or to the house battery because this thing is already grounded to the van. And I've grounded some of them to the body of the van and I've kind of done this arbitrarily. Like my dimmer switch is grounded to this metal piece right here. So as you can see, I've got all these wires coming up here and I need to label them. But the LED light 14 gauge wire comes all the way around. And I have diverging connectors that go to each light. And I'll put up the diagram so that you can see how this is done. But I'll also show you here. So here, for example, we've got the red positive connection. I've added the connector to the t puck light with a tap splice. That's what this blue thing is. So it creates a three-way connection. Shout out to Linnea and Akila for teaching me everything about this. Once we have that three-way connection, I can attach a female or male connector to the end of this red wire. And then a female or male, whatever the opposite is for him or her to the wires coming out of the puck light. And then I'll be able to connect these. This is a tap splice, by the way, just a closer look. So you put the main wire, the wire that goes around the whole van and connects each puck light. You put that through this first hole on the left and then you add the connection into that second hole. And then you uh, use a pair of pliers to push them together and this metal piece you see here and kind of see how it clamps down on both of them and creates a metal connection between both of them but it's kind of cool it creates a three-way connection so that's perfect for lights when you want to run them in parallel 
this is my inverter and it's pretty simple I am just using what it came with so I'll just hook these cables onto the positive and negative sides of the battery and then the inverter is ready to go and I'm just gonna have it on a shelf it's gonna be in a cabinet here I'm gonna have it on a shelf right above here so that I can plug my appliances and laptop and such into I do have a DC like cigarette lighter type outlet for the fridge here and that will just be connected directly to the battery because it's DC it doesn't need to be inverted to AC and then that little outlet is just going to come out of the cabinet somewhere around here and then the cooler will just be uh, wired and plugged into it. Also a huge shout out to the YouTube channel Find Out. A lot of my system is based on what they did and I definitely pirated their list of electronics and devices um, used in their system. One thing I've learned about electric wiring and doing the electric part of a van build is that you can make a lot of mistakes and it can still turn out just fine. Even if you make a wire too short by accident, you can always extend it by adding a connector. Whether that's a butt connector, a female to male connector, or one of those twisty connectors, you can always extend the length of the wire. Even if you accidentally chop a wire in half, you can just patch it right back together. So in terms of those kind of mistakes, you, you can't really mess up. You do want to make sure that you have the right um, power levels for, for what you're looking for and make sure that the system is safe. And I'm probably not the best one to talk about that, but I trust the experts and I've copied the experts, so uh, it's worked out well for me in the past. The electric stuff was really, really intimidating to me for the first build, and this time I felt pretty confident, and that's a great feeling. By the way, here's a little van update. As you can see, I like to start and not finish a lot of things, but that makes it easy to come together at the end.